Well, hello, I'm Danny Scroggins, the Operations and Compliance Director for IST Simulations, and you join us here in the Eastley ASC Panel 1 Simulator, which we've been building for Network Rail over the last few months. It's a complete replica of Eastley Panel 1 in about 75% of real size, and it's all on touch screens. So all of the NX operating functionality takes place on touch screens. For example, if I touch an entrance button here, the entrance button will start to flash in the official way. And then when I select a suitable exit button, the white route lights become continuous and the signal steps up if it can. The interlocking in the simulator is exactly the same SSI data that's in the real uh, panel, interpreted by us, to give a 100% accurate simulation training experience. The TD data comes from the real TD, the timetable data comes from the real uh, SIF uh, as used by Network Rail. Uh, there are some other functionality uh, points for the touchscreen, such as pulling a button. It's obviously a little bit difficult on a touchscreen. So there's two options for the candidate to pull a button. One is to swipe across the button like that. And the button will pull up. The interlocking will behave in exactly the real way, so it will time out if it needs to. If I set the route again, it'll reset. Or the candidate can pinch the button as if they were going to be pulling a physical button and the system will detect that there's two fingers coming towards the button uh, and enacts the pull-up. For the individual point switches, the candidate just taps the side of the domino that the switch needs to move to, and the interlocking responds if it can. All of the telephones and GSMR equipment all works exactly as per the real thing. I can show you the signaler receiving a telephone call. The concentrator flashes and beeps in the same way that the real thing does, and that is actually the sound recorded off of the real one, so the candidate will get used to the tone in their ear. When they pick up the receiver, it'll stop ringing, and they connect it to the circuit. And the candidate is connected on the phone to the assessor sitting at their desk, and the calls are recorded in case they want to be used for um, evidence of competence decision-making on safety-critical comms. The candidate can also make an outgoing call. They pick up the receiver and just press the appropriate circuit they want to connect to, and the assessor's desk shows which circuit's being called. The uh, GSMR also works. The train mobiles list reflects exactly the head codes that are in the simulator and which signal they're at at the exact moment. The waiting at signal facility works, including sending back a wait or a call or a remove. The DSD facility works and normal urgent and emergency calls uh, all work in the way that you'd expect. Again, it's the real official sound from a real GSMR terminal. The candidate can answer it by pressing the ACB button or just picking up the receiver in the real way. And once again, no matter which driver rang, they're connected to the assessor at the assessor's desk. And then when they hang up, the call will end, or of course they can press the ACB button. For some of the more advanced features like emergency calls, if a driver makes an emergency call, the simulator will work out other trains that are in the same cell areas and bring them to a stand. Or if the candidate makes an emergency call, depending on the sub-area or the whole area that the candidate selected, the appropriate trains will be stopped. There's a whole range of uh, failure facilities um, that the assessor can enact, either manually or using a pre-programmed uh, set of scenario steps. That's everything to do with uh, the operation of track circuits, failing right side and wrong side and intermittent. Every single possible permutation of lamp failure from a signal, including the stencil boxes and the feathers. Different behavior of points, including failing the, uh, the detection and the drive and the technician's disconnections and different possible failure options for trains, such as maximum speeds and diverting trains away from their booked route. I'll show you some of the failure options on the assessor's desk now. This is the assessor's desk, uh, part of the simulator, which is connected to the candidate's panel. And it's in the same room here at Eastleigh, but it could be in a different room or behind a one-way mirror or, or, or plate and glass um, or anything. There's, there's only one network cable that joins the two together. The assessor has a big map which represents the panel map, but much more indications and much more information on the map than the, uh, than, the, than the candidate gets. So, for example, the assessor gets the exact aspect that a signal is showing, including if it's flashing or it's got a stencil or a position light junction indicator. And the assessor also has a train list on the bottom screen here. And normally the train list is sort of green and grey. And when it's green and grey, that means everything's running fine. But as things start to not run fine, as trains start to come to a stand, and as they've been at a stand for a long time, they go yellow and then they turn into orange. And if a train has been wrong routed or has passed a signal at danger or, or anything like that that's sort of quite serious, uh, then it'll show red. 
So wherever the assessor is in the room, they can always glance over at this screen and see whether it's looking pretty green or whether it's got some bits of red on it. And if it's got some bits of red, that's the clue that the assessor needs to come over and do something. They don't have to spend their entire life glued to this chair. It's all touch screen, or the assessor can use a mouse, whatever they feel most comfortable with. Everything on the map is a, is a clickable um, sort of uh, opportunity for the, for the assessor to interact. So for example, clicking on a track circuit brings up a context menu with all the failure options to do with a track circuit, fail or fail intermittent and right side and wrong side and all the different things, fail the panel indications that can be done with a track circuit. And the same with a signal. Clicking on a signal brings up all the technician's controls to do with the signal, such as if it needs to be disconnected in, a, in association with a line blockage with disconnections um, and other failure options for each individual signal lamp and feather. And finally with the points, and on the points, uh, the failure options include separately the drive and the detection, so that the candidate can be trained in using the detective skills of getting to the bottom of a failure. When they move that switch back to normal, do the points regain normal detection instantly, or does it take three seconds and they can get to the bottom of whether it's a drive failure or a detection failure, whether the blades on the ground actually moved at all. And finally, the assessor can click on a train and it brings up a much larger uh, menu for a train, which shows all the current information about the train, what speed it is and what direction it's going and where it expects to call, the timetable, and the train knows where, it, where its destination is and what stations it's supposed to call at. So if the candidate does wrong route the train, it'll stop nicely at the junction signal, it'll come up here in red saying assessor's action required, and the assessor can either ring up on the GSMR and pretend to be the driver and complain about the route that's been set, and the signaler can restroke it, or the assessor can just press a button to say, we're not here to assess that today, just carry on and take the signal that you've been given, and then the driver will just carry on and take the signal that it's been given for the sake of the scenario. Other buttons down the bottom, such as passing signals at danger, including the new option to pass two signals at danger at a time, and whether or not that includes GPLs in accordance with the December last year uh, rulebook updates. There's also an option to pass all signals at danger until a certain signal to allow emergency special working or temporary block working to be simulated. The train will just carry on passing signals at danger until it arrives at the exit signal. And finally, the telephone interface down the bottom, where the assessor can make calls to the candidates or where the candidates' calls to the assessor come in. And the telephone is where all the calls come through to for the assessor to answer. All the calls are recorded and can be retrieved from the simulator. The simulator can also monitor the behaviour of pieces of equipment through the course of the scenario, such as how many seconds after a particular uh, piece of equipment failed did the signaller pull up the button and how many seconds did it take them to put a reminder on it. And that can be used as evidence for competence decision making afterwards.